Hi, good morning. In ecology, we often hear the two words. One is renewable energy and another one is non-renewable energy. Our ability to understand these two terms mean it is about life and death. Non-renewable resources, when we talk about them, we need to exercise caution when we use these natural resources. What are the non-renewable, for example? For example, coal, oil, even natural gas, and other uh, uh, metal elements like iron ore, copper, gold, silver. They are made some millions of years before and uh, maybe 250 million years ago, like coal and oil. Now, once you take them, they go extinct. They are lost to the planet forever. They are not renewable. Probably we, mu we might or we should wait another 250 million years. Are we going to live that long? Because coal, once you take from the planet, it's over. Forget about the the air pollution it causes. Gold, we have taken them all. It's lost. Today, most of the gold mines are closed forever. And oil, how long it's going to last? I think it's going to be finished very soon. The show is over maybe 30 years time I'm talking about the coal, oil, petrol, diesel, natural gas, all those uh, natural resources will, will be exhausted. Even other, other elements like iron ore, silver, copper, everything is going to be ending. So we need to apply caution. What do I mean by that? Energy efficiency. When we use these natural resources, the non-renewable resources, we need to use them efficiently. Efficiently. We need to create energy efficient appliances, technology, science, use them sparingly and pollute them sparingly. Probably better technology can increase the efficiency of these non-renewable resources. Clean burning machines or we can use alternative, probably a mixture of bio fuels, we can mix them with diesel and petrol. So we can minimize the use of non-renewable resources. And it should be a education, probably academics. We can develop university studies, a curriculum for students how to hmm, uh, use non-renewable resources from childhood onwards. Our children should be taught environmental education, especially how to use non-renewable resources. But now, now I'm going to talk about renewable resources. We have got plenty of <laughs> renewable resources like wind, sun, and uh, water biofuels, biodiesel, even ocean 
energy and abundant geothermal energy. This renewable, you take it and you take it and they are going to last forever, almost. So much of sun energy, solar energy. It's a shame that India is having so much of sun, but it's a stupidity to go for coal and petrol and diesel and oil. In Saudi Arabia, so much of sun. We understand maybe cold climates. They may require to use non-renewable resources, but in tropical countries, we've got plenty of solar energy and we can cultivate the sun. Solar panels, the energy would last as long as the sun is existing. After all, we are the sons and daughters of the sun. Actually, I am drinking the sun. Actually, we are eating the sun. All the fruits are the outcome of the photosynthesis, that is, the light, sun's light, water and carbon dioxide. Ultimately, we are eating the sun, drinking the sun, tasting the sun. So why can't we use sun's energy for the use of our daily use? Wind, it may not be that much dependable like sun, like solar, but still, as long as the wind is there, we can use the wind turbines to generate electricity. But be expensive, many environmentalists they really uh, criticize this kind of practices because the wind, the big turbines, when they turn, probably it will be dangerous for the birds, those who migrate in those wind corridors. So there is a little bit of low down on this energy and also we require an enormous amount of space to use the turbines. But still, it is a good source of renewable energy. And then what about hydroelectricity? We have been doing for years. We have been doing for years. Water energy. And uh, like waterfalls or building dams and store the water and release them in force and turn the turbines and to produce electricity. India has been doing wonderfully well. A lot of electricity was produced in a hydroelectric way. And especially Nagarjuna Saga, a lot of that is one example where they produce enormous amount of electricity. Hundreds of dams in India, they produce uh, hydroelectricity. That's very, very valuable and very efficient. And uh, I think we need to cultivate that. Now, what about biodiesel? And today, Biodiesel is a magic term, but there is also low down a lot of food grains or uh, air, arable land which was used for producing food crops, but now they are turned into biodiesel crops. So that puts pressure on the food web, on the food production and a lot of hunger, almost one billion people are suffering and one billion people require food. They go hungry, that is what United Nations Food Organization is saying. So a lot of food grains are funneled to produce biodiesel and probably we need to exercise caution there and probably the uncultivated land so far, that land could be used for the production of biodiesel or some forest where there's patches, fragmentation, we can cultivate there and use the arable land for food production. And geothermal is very, very important today. Most of the Scandinavian countries, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, all these countries, they do a good job 
you tap into the the volcanic lava and then you send pipes inside and then you bring the steam from these volcanoes and turn the giant turbines and you produce electricity forever and ever amen as long as volcano work long as the fire is burning under the surface of the earth and you get electricity and you get energy lots of energy i think the future geothermal uh, is the promise i think every human being should have access to free energy we should never pay for it it's paid by mother earth you don't have to dig in your wallet mother earth will pay for you that's mother earth pay for other thing isn't it for breathing for drinking for eating wow everything is free mother earth pays for you then why can't mother earth pay for energy consumption hey it will pay for us then you come to tidal the ocean the ocean waves those waves contain energy and uh, there are lots of way you can harness the energy from the ocean for example it's called sea snake it looks like a snake inside there is the electromagnetic coil and then the snake shakes shakes as the waves rock the sea snake the magnet inside the snake goes sliding up and down sideways and that friction causes the production of electricity and you can harness even though not in large numbers we are talking about the domestic use for lights and fans we can use it and also we can burn uh, wood that can cause problems of cutting down trees deforestation but you can cultivate trees you cut one tree plant 10 so in that way it becomes renewable and if you don't plant it becomes non renewable so don't cut it but when you cut one tree plant 10 of them and then you burn and then you can heat the water and then the the hot water can run the turbines and there you are you put electricity the last one is nuclear energy uranium plutonium many people say there is no pollution there very clean energy so it takes only a small amount of space all this stuff what i'm talking about they take huge amount of space and uh, i think nuclear energy but caution should be applied and uh, we should spend a lot of research on developing this kind of energy though this is even though we have thousands of uh, nuclear reactors around the world and yet we need to develop a technology still in the energy transition phase when it comes to nuclear energy still we don't have we didn't get it right how to harness and how to use this powerful renewable energy and i think uranium and plutonium also going to run out i'm calling it renewable in the sense that it can last forever and uh, with little amount of natural resource you can run all our civilization for hundreds and millions of years so i think um, all this renewable Uh, energy sources are still in that transition phase we are still very primitive in understanding them and harnessing them i think we need to spend a lot of research lot of money uh, to learn about this energy transition it's very very good i think renewable energy is the future i think we should focus our attention on this uh, magic a uh, magical future
I would call it. So please reduce non-renewable resources and don't pressure them and save them for the future generations and go for renewable energy. That is the sustainable future. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.